In today's video, I'm sharing five simple hacks to avoid this. Any of the tools that are referred to in this list will be linked in the description below. If you're interested, you can check them out. All right, so number one, knocking the dust out of your collet at every tool change. This seems super simple, and it is but it keeps your bit from slipping. So a collet has these grooves cut in it. When you tighten it, it flexes around the shaft of your CNC bit. Like it kind of cinches in on it. But if you have dust and material in those slits, it can't get a firm grip around that shaft. So this is one that really sneaks up on people because they don't realize that it can happen. And then all of a sudden, your tool depth keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. A lot of times your bit won't just fall out, but it's slipping and it slips down deeper and deeper. And it's really hard to figure out. You can think it's, that it's the G code and the machine's making an error. It doesn't take much to get the dust out of there. You could use compressed air, but I just take a couple taps with my wrench, my collet wrench on the collet nut and just kind of tap it a little bit and do that every time I do a tool change, and that way I'm maintaining that, and it's just a habit I've got into. Number two is taking the time to prepare your stock. Flat stock is the bedrock, or is the foundation of a successful car. If your stock isn't flat, it creates so many problems uh, from clamping, not able to get a, a good clamp pressure down, even pressure, especially with double-sided tape, because if there's a, a bow or a twist in your stock, it'll rock back and forth. The second thing that can happen is your carve depths aren't consistent. So if you zero to the bottom left corner and that is your Z zero to the top of your stock, but you're a quarter inch higher on the opposite side or in the middle, when the bit travels to those higher areas, it's actually you're adding a quarter inch depth of cut uh, to your already set depth of cut. The third thing that can happen is when you're V-carving, you'll get inconsistencies. So you want those letters to not look nice and even. So again, if you zero your Z to the top of your stock in the bottom left, but it isn't the same all the way throughout your workpiece, uh, you're gonna lead to deeper letters, which in V-carving is gonna lead to wider letters. So there's gonna be inconsistencies. So taking the time to mill and make sure that your stock is flat, assuming your table is flat, um, will save you such a headache. All right, number three is installing stops on your wasteboard to create a permanent or semi-permanent X, Y zeroing point. So you may be wondering, how is this gonna reduce the mistakes or errors that I make with my CNC? Well, I found that any process that you can streamline or automate reduces error. So if I have a zeroing point in my bottom left hand corner i put my every piece of stock in that corner i zero to that corner a lot of times i don't even have to reset my x y because it's already set i'm just setting my z height zeroing my z but what that does is it's just expect it's expected it's known if i'm doing a perimeter pass and cutting something out uh, i don't have to worry about oh am i too far left or too far right like everything is known in that corner right there and i'm not going to get too far off to one side and mess something up so it's just almost an anchor point of where i can start everything now this doesn't work for every single job but i would say 90 percent of the jobs that i do that's what i use that's my starting point all right number four is setting your retract height higher than your clamps there are many different clamping methods out there and some clamps stick up higher than your workpiece. I don't care for them because I've broken bits on them. So I try to use either inline clamps or double sided tape. But if you are using T-Track with this type of clamp, you're going to want to set your Z retract height higher. So what's going to happen is when your machine is moving from place to place between cuts, your retract height is measured from the top of your workpiece where you set zero to how far it pulls up above your work, the, the top of your workpiece and moves around. So you wanna make sure that's set above your clamp height. It'll travel above all those clamps. It's well worth it because I've got into clamps before like this one and it's not good. Ends up breaking the bit and your job is ruined. So a lot of people don't know that you can set your retract height but this is a setting no matter what software you're using. All right, number five, and maybe my favorite, is running an air pass 
before you actually run your final cut pass. So what is an air pass? Well, I like to run an air pass when I'm running a new file, new code where I don't know a a hundred percent what the machine's going to do. So what you do is you set your Z height instead of setting it to where you typically would set it um, at the top of your workpiece, you can set it two or three inches above or even more four or five inches, whatever your Z will allow. And it will do exactly what it's going to do, but it'll do it five inches or whatever you set that at above where it normally would. So this is a great way to see what the machine's gonna do and lower the risk of errors, especially on things that you haven't cut before and you just wanna see what the machine is gonna do. CNC crashes are no fun. So hopefully these tips will help eliminate or reduce the number of errors or CNC crashes that you have. But something that is fun is making cool projects. And I've got a video right here where I've made five fall projects Fall's coming up, believe it or not, um, that you can check it out and be inspired by. So check out that video right there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.